Well, hello, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Biblical Financial Freedom. Hallelujah. This is the place where we come and see what God has to say about finances, and if we do what the Bible says, I'm guarantee you, you will be free financially. So praise God. We're going to continue our teaching on blessed is God's best. I like just how that says. Say it with me. Blessed is God's best. So we're going to continue. We started that last week, and we're going to continue again this week. And uh, let me introduce myself, first of all, in case you're watching us for the first time. I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry here in the Pacific Northwest of the United States of America. I want to thank you for taking time to tune in, to watch this. And I pray also that you will share it. You know, hit the like button. Hit the... Uh, uh, subscribe button. Hit the, sh uh, what is it? Like, share, subscribe. I, see, I don't even know all that fancy stuff. And you share it. I guarantee you, every one of you know somebody, a family member, a friend that need help with finances. So just share it with them. It's the easiest way to get the word out to people. Say, hey, I want you to watch this. You ain't got to say them. Just share it. They say, who's this? And they might watch it. Oh, then they be telling you, man, you got to watch this guy. I've been watching about finances. You just never know. Amen. But just just do that and be a blessing. OK. And then we'd like for you to have your Bible. That's our great textbook right here. Great textbook, the Bible. Make sure you have that some pen and the paper and something to take notes. So let's pray. Let's make our daily confession and let's get into the word. So Father, right now in Jesus name, we thank you for this day. And I thank you for this opportunity to share the wonderful gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, Father, you give us ears to hear. I thank you, Father, we won't be just hearers of the word of God, but doers of the word of God. And then I thank you for the Holy Spirit. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. He's our teacher. He's our God. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you. I ask you to help me to teach this word with simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of the people. And I thank you, Father, we'll take this word, hear this word, apply it to our lives, and see the results that God has promised in his word. And then I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now, in Jesus' name, I bind every idle word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation, every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us to hinder the word of God and hinder the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare and we decree in Jesus' name, not one of those things should be manifested and not one of those things should come to pass in our lives. But Father, we just release the goodness of God, the blessings of God, the favor of God. Hallelujah. The provision of God to be manifested in each and every one of our lives. And we thank you, Father, that what you have started in us, you will complete in us until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, and all the honor. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, get your Bibles. Let's make this confession together. You guys ready? Come on, get your Bible. Wave them in the air like you really can. Here we go. Ready? This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same, never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, like I said, we're going to continue our teaching on blessed is God's best. Amen. I like that. Bless is God's best. So let's go to Psalms 112, Psalm 112 and verses 1 through 3. And I'm reading this in the King James. This is our foundation scripture. Are you ready? It says, praise ye the Lord. Blessed. Here we go. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, 
and his righteousness endures forever. Woo, glory be to God. See, look, how many times it says bless? One, two, mm -hmm. two times in there he talking about bless. See, it's, it's, it's the blessing of God. Now, in the Amplified Bible, and, and, now I'm not going to read it, but I'm, I'm just going to say it to you. In the Amplified, it says prosperity and welfare. Where it says wealth and riches shall be in his house, it says prosperity and welfare are in his house. See, prosperity and welfare, that means you're taking care. God best for our lives is for us to be blessed. Not just occasionally, but all the time. When God first created man, then what did he do? He blessed him. Now, that's where we was at last week. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and look at verses 26 through 28. Genesis chapter 1. Ooh, that's way back in the beginning. So look at Genesis chapter 1 and look at verses 26 through 28. You guys ready? It says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air, over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them. So you might want to underline that. And God blessed them. What did he do? He blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth, okay? And so do it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. I love that it says, and God blessed them. When man failed and God started over with Noah, he blessed him. See, God blessed man here, and then when man fell, and he started over, with, over again with Noah, what did he do? He blessed him. Why? Because that's the pattern of God. That's the heart of God for man is for him to be blessed. So let's look at Genesis chapter 9 and verse 1. So let's, how are we going to see this? We got to go in the Bible. So just go over here a few pages. Genesis chapter 9. And look at verse 1. Genesis 9 and 1. Hallelujah. It says, And God blessed Noah. See, just, just right there. Underline that. What did God do? He blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, just like he told man in the beginning, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Now, I want to say this to you. God's plan for man never changed. Although Adam and Eve sinned and filled in the garden, okay, God's plan for man never changed. God's plan is still for you and I to rule and reign on the earth. God's plan has never changed. He, he's looking for you and I to, re, uh, to multiply, be fruitful, multiply, and replenish the earth. That's what God is looking for. His, it has never changed. God, that's why when Jesus even came, he said, occupy until I come. Go ye into all the world, preaching this gospel, right, to every nation. He said, make disciples of every nation. What was God talking about? People look at other nationalities. No, he talked about nation. He want every nation to be under the lordship and the rulership of the kingdom of heaven. That's the big battle we have in America. What we have, we got good versus evil. Okay. That's what we see in the political room. The laws that's being, it's, it's the evil forces of darkness trying to go against the, the good forces, the holy forces of God. And man, you either yield yourself, why? You yield yourself to the Holy Spirit or you yield yourself to the evil spirits of the devil. And how do you know what side people are on? Look at what they pushing. If you pushing things that are according to the word of God, then you, you, you're doing the will of God. But if you're pushing things that oppose the word of God, you know that's the forces of evil behind it. Amen? Because God's plan has always been to bless man. It's always been. See, bless is God's best. It's never God's will for you to be under a curse or for me under to be under a curse. 
blessed is God's best. He always, he loves man. He always wanted to bless man. And God even told man to choose. Choose life or death, blessing or cursing. And then what he said, he said, choose life. It's your choice, church. It's your choice. Now, what that got to do with finances? If you obey God, walk in his commandments, keep his word, do what he said, he's going to bless you. If God bless you, who can stop you? But you got to get to that part even when it comes to your finances. See, a lot of times people watch, they just want me to give them little quick principles on finances and all that. This is all a part of it. You got to wrap it all up with what God's telling you to do. And God tells you and I to live a particular way. Okay? You see God here, okay? You'll see God's lifestyle, his pattern, continually in the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You're going to see that was God's pattern, the blessed man. Okay, let's go to Genesis chapter 12. Watch, watch Genesis 12 and look at verse chapter 1, I mean verses 1 and 2. You See, you're going to see this pattern throughout the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What? God's blessing. Watch, okay, look at this in Genesis chapter uh, 12 and look at verse 1, 2. Now the Lord has said unto Abram, Okay, that's his name was changed to Abraham. But he says to Abram, get thee out of thy country. Here are the instructions he's given him. He's given him a commandment, giving him instruction. Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house onto a land that I will show thee. See, God told him, I need you to leave your country. I need you to leave your kindred, and I need you to leave from your father's house. What I'm going to do, Lord, well, I want you to go unto a land that I will show thee. And then look at verse 2. He said, and I will make of thee a great nation. God said, if you do this, this is what i do for you. He said, I'm going to make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee. Man, come on. What else do you need? What else do I need? When I heard God says, I will bless thee. If God ever speaks, and when you know according to his word, so you got to ask yourself, is it God's will for me to be blessed? We did a teaching before this talking about blessing. It is, is prosperity a, a curse, curse or blessing? Prosperity, is it a curse or is it a blessing? See, it's, church, you got to get to the place where you believe what the word says. You got to find, is it God's will for man to be blessed or to be cursed? Because look what he says here. I will make of thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. See, God wants to bless you and I so that we can be a blessing. It's not about just stuff for you and me. It's so we can be a blessing. How many of you see that? How many of you understand that? See, God from the beginning, we read, we went in Genesis. In the beginning, it was God's will. He said, and he blessed man. And he blessed them. And then we saw in Noah, he said, and God blessed Noah and his sons. See, it's always been God's plan to bless us and to bless man. Then we see over here, he says, I will make of thee a great nation, okay, and I will bless thee. Man, come on. Come on, brother and sister. Do you, the only way you can't believe that God wants you to be blessed is because you totally, totally ignore and give no reverence or credence to the word of God. But, but you know, he said, he wants you. He said, be blessed. Okay, let's go to Genesis 24 and 1. Look at Genesis 24 and 1. Okay, Genesis 24. Look at verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. It says, and Abram was old and well stricken in age. And the Lord had blessed Abram. In all things. Come oh, man. Who 
dude, the Lord blessed him. And the Lord blessed, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in what? In some things, a few things. He said, in all things. To be blessed means that God has empowered you to prosper. Okay, you might want to write that down. When to be blessed means that God has empowered you to prosper. That's what it is to be blessed. People say, oh man, Pastor, you're blessed. And so, so, that means God has empowered us to prosper. And I'm here to tell you, he has empowered me to prosper. Because I'm somebody special? No, just because I chose to say, I'm going after God. I'm going to obey God. I'm going to follow his word. I'm going to listen to the word, listen to other men and women of God who teach God and teach that God wants us blessed. Look, just the few scriptures I gave you from Adam to Noah to Abraham, that should be enough to, for you to see that God wants you to be blessed. So when you hearing other people and you hear other things that is not God's will for you to be blessed or for you to be prosperous, man, you know that's a lie. Why? Because it doesn't line up with the word. It doesn't jive, as we say. It doesn't, it can't, it can't, I mean, it, it just doesn't compute with the word of God. Because God always, he blessed his man or women, women and the women of God, the men of God. He blessed them. Why? It's just the nature of God. It's part of the covenant. God ain't some bad God up there looking to knock you out or make you suffer to teach you something. God is always looking to bless his people. That's just the nature, the pattern of God. If you read this Bible, you can't find where God, the nature of God, the pattern of God is to make his people suffer, to take from them. We do that when we disobey and we try to do things our ways and walk outside of the will of God or the plans of God. We start doing, I'm going to do it my way. All God told us in Deuteronomy 8, 18, just remember the Lord, just remember him. Everything you get, everything you have, remember it was the Lord. You ain't do none of it. It was the Lord. But what do a lot of people do? They forget it was the Lord. And they begin to believe it was hell. No, it's the blessing. It's the blessing. See, blessed is God's best. How do we know that? Because when God bless you, you look. All you got to do is receive it and do what he tells you. That's part of the packet. Blessed is God's best. For us to live. Any less than bless is to be robbed of God's best. See, when you and I lived in any other way, any other situation than being blessed, then we being robbed of God's best. Because God's best is for you and I to be blessed. Blessed is God's best. Okay, let's look at this. I, I want to go to John. John, I'm going to read this in my, out of my iPad here. Look at John uh, 10 and verse 10. I'm going to read this in the Amplified Classic. Oh, glory be to God. It says this. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came... This is Jesus talking. I came that they may have and enjoy life. Jesus came that you may have life and enjoy life. And have it in abundance. To the full. Till it overflows. Now this is great. I'm telling you church. We, we, we say a lot. You heard me say, you stick around here a lot. You heard me say, K-I-S-S, -S, keep it simple, saints. You and I need help to misunderstand what Jesus said here. You got to have help not to see what Jesus said here. So I'm going to read it again. He said, the thief. Now he's going to tell you the only reason the devil will come the only reason the thief comes, he said, the thief comes only 
in order. Now, now, the only time the devil comes to you or not, he, this is why he comes. And only in order, this is the only reason he comes in order. He only comes to steal and kill and destroy. Now, I want to ask you, what do you not understand about that? What is it that Jesus is telling you right here that you don't understand? He told you the thief, which is the devil, is all he comes for. He comes to steal. Okay, number one, he's coming to steal. Number two, to kill. And then number to destroy. So I want to ask you this. Why do we act so surprised when we disobey and do not do the thing and do not keep the commandments of God or do the things that God tells us? Why do we act so surprised when we get the results that we don't want? God already told you what the enemy's coming for. So I want to ask you, when you out there doing your own thing, when you keeping back what you're supposed to give to God or do what he tells you to do if you're fine, why do you act surprised or you go to God and say, God, what's happening? What's going on? He told you. He told you what the devil's going to do. He's going to steal, he's going to kill, and he's going to destroy. That's the only three functions that sucker has. And it's ama it amazes me how many Christian people disobey God, live their life however they want, and then they expect God, they expect they're supposed to have a different result. When the Bible tells you, don't do this, don't do that, do, do this, and you'll be blessed. But we, we do other things, and then we expect when we get the results, we cry or we get mad at God. Why did this happen? God said, I told you. And now look at the next part. He said, I came. Now God's going to tell you what the devil came. He just gave you the devil qualification. That's, this is what his attributes are. He, he, he had nothing else. Steal, kill, and destroy. And you know how he does it? By lying. Because he'll never tell you the truth. The devil is the father of lie. He'll always lie. The Bible says he's a lie. The lie and the truth is not in him. If you ever look and wait for the devil to tell you the truth, Man, you're going to be waiting till heaven come and go because he ain't. All that boy can do is lie. And then it says, I came. Jesus says, I came. Now, Jesus is going to give you his attributes and his qualification for what he's on the earth for, what he came for. Now, listen to what Jesus said. I came. Now, okay, Jesus, what you come for? That they may have life. Okay. He want us to have life. And then he wants us and enjoy life. Okay, now what did Jesus come for? For He came that I may have life. And then look what he says, and enjoy life. Now, I want to ask, is poverty or lack, is that enjoying life? No. Sickness and disease, is that enjoying life? No. That's, 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 that's not enjoying life. But Jesus said, I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance. See, Jesus said, I came that you may have and enjoy life and do what? And have it in abundance. That doesn't sound like lack to me. Jesus wants you and I to have life in abundance. Then what he said, I love this in parentheses. He said, I mean, in, in a, uh, yeah, parenthesis, it says two to four. This is why Jesus came, for you and I to have life two to four. If you lack it in any area of your life, we know we don't have it two to four yet. Jesus said, I came that you might have life two to four. And then I love this part, tell it overflows. If it's not overflowing in your life, then you know that ain't, you just keep, some, keep be rocking steady. Don't give up. Keep rocking steady until that manifests. Why? Because we know that's what Jesus came for. He came that you might have life to the full or tell it overflows. Another word for abundance is the word abound. See, to have a bound, abundance is abound. The word abundance is another word. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Another word for abundance is the word abound. God wants you and I to abound in every area of our life. That's an abundance. 
God wants you to abound. The word abound means to be fully supplied. Okay? When you abounding in the grace of God, abounding in the things of God, the word abound means to be fully supplied and to be filled to capacity. Now, I'm going to stop right there. Hallelujah. Because I sense in my spirit. We're going to pick this up next week. We're going to pick up. I'm going to explain that more. I pick up right there where I left off. And we explain in Philippians 4.19 uh, where God wants us to have a supply. But I want to do this. If you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, this is your opportunity. And why did Jesus come? He came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, the devil, he told you, he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I'm here to tell you, Jesus wants you to have life to the full and overflowing. So if you never made Jesus the Lord of your life, I want you to pray this prayer with me right now. Come on, you can do it. Say, dear God in heaven, right now, in Jesus' name, I give my life to you. Jesus, take my life and use it for your glory. I repent and turn away from all activities of the devil. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Thank you, Father, for accepting me. Thank you, Jesus, for being my Lord. Now teach me your word and teach me your ways. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, glory be to God. Welcome to the family of God. Now I pray that you find a good Bible, spirit-filled church. Now if you can't, you're welcome to join with us. Keep coming, have your Bible, take notes so you can grow in the things of God. And welcome to the family of God. Now look, I'm out of time, but I want you to remember this. That God is exalted, Satan is defeated, and Jesus is Lord. P-O-H, peace out homies and homiettes. We'll see you the next time. God bless you for now. Bye.